Good morning, everyone. This is the June 21st meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And seeing we have a quorum, I'm going to call out people's names just to be sure they can hear us, we can hear them. There's several members of the committee that aren't currently here yet. Um, I know at least one was planning on being late. When they arrive, I'll also verify they can hear and be heard. Um, so I'm just going to call out names as I see them on my screen. Doug? Good morning, President. Jonathan? Good morning. Rupert? Well, howdy. <laughs> Rupert? Jennifer? Good morning. Uh, Bruce? I'm here. Simone? Good morning. And Alicia? Here. And Deb Leonard. Deb, I'm just calling out. Just let us know you can hear us and we can hear you. Good morning. I can hear you. Okay, great. So um, as per usual, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Margaret, who will both overview of the agenda for the day, but also where we are on the various timelines. And then the world is turned over to the people who are in charge of getting this project up and moving. Um, so, uh, Margaret, it's all yeah. yours, and let me make sure I uh, share screen. Uh, multiple. Okay, I've allowed sharing. All right, well, happy first day of summer. Um, happy cooler weather. <laughs> um, the agenda is not lengthy. Um, we will start with the overview of the project schedule that I usually begin with. We'll get an update on the construction. Um, there are some final design decisions that um, I think Denisco is gonna update us about. Uh, we're gonna, as noted in the schedule where the Denisco is wrapping up the bid documents. So we're getting ready to go to bid with the building project. We'll get an update from the sustainability subcommittee. And then we have time for public questions. There are invoices to review, um, sorry, response to public questions of which there were two raised in the last meeting, um, public comment and adjourn. So that is the agenda. Um, I'm now going to pivot to my usual calendar update, which, <clears throat> you know, I think I mentioned last time. Um, I think this is a really useful tool during the design process, but you can see that it starts to get simpler and simpler as we look into the future um, as tasks that are that enable the overall project to kind of come to a close. So just to walk through it. So here we are. The building committee meeting sort of looking out now into October once a month. Um, the consultant team's work is um, we just received the MSBA comments, I think, on Monday. So we're in the process of responding to those comments. Denisco is and their team is working hard to complete the 100 percent documents. And then right after the bid documents are advertised, they will be making a submission the lead design submission that's required to the USGBC. And then out in the future, um, we will need to, this is really a placeholder, we will need to go back to um, CONCOM to confirm the plate that we are moving ahead with the playground uh, surfacing material. So um, the other big activity that's going on is the preparation for the bid process. So right now we have a tentative date for July 3rd for the, the bid documents to be advertised publicly. We're using a platform, an online platform called BidDocs, if you want to go look at it. It's, it's pretty interesting, actually. There's a lot of public work that's advertised through BidDocs, and it makes it very accessible to see the bids. Um, the first step will be the receipt of filed sub-bids, which is going to happen approximately the end of July. And approximately two weeks later, the general contractor bids will be due, which pull in the results of the filed sub-bid bidding. Um, once we know who the lowest qualified bidder is, we will confirm the town's insurance, uh, hub insurances, bid process for builder's risk, which is insurance that's held by the town. 
Um, there will be a contract award to the general contractor, and we expect they would be mobilizing shortly after Labor Day. Um, in the meantime, on the construction meeting line, this these three items here indicate the the that we are coming to the completion of the early bid package. And I'm gonna turn to Ksenia and Rick for a little bit of update on that. So there will not be construction meetings through July and August, but once the contractor is on board for the building project, they will be picking back up um, probably in early September and will occur weekly. Um, and the participants in that process on behalf of the town are uh, Bob Parent, answer the design team so and then um also kind of coming to the end of the msba process um again i mentioned we got their comments on monday um, we have two weeks to turn around responses which we'll share with you at the next meeting and then um, the next kind of big task is um once we have the general contractor on board we have to put together um, documents to support what's called the uh, project funding agreement bid amendment, which has a bunch of pieces, but probably the biggest piece of it is we need to provide the MSBA with what's called a schedule of values that lays out the categories of the cost of the categories of work comes from the contractor. So it happens, you know, a month or two after the contractor's on board. So any questions about that before I take it down? Not seeing any questions. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. So, Margaret, if after the meeting you could send that to me and I will post. I will. And just a couple corrections um, on the elementary school building committee meetings after August, you keep having an August date in it. So just fix the date. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, just so that <laughs> so people. Yeah. Get, <laughs> No, so just people can double check their calendars because we're only yeah. meeting once a month. Um, and those should all be, there should be a hold on everyone's calendar by now for those meetings. So yeah, that was exactly. my only very small typo kind of comment. Thank you. Okay, so construction update. Ksenia, do you want to start? Rick, you want to chime in? Sure. Sure. Um, we are basically just about done with the early site package work. It went very professionally, um, very successfully. Um, Gaglia Ducci has been excellent to work with throughout all stages of the process. Um, all members of the design team, the construction team, the OPM team, the town collaborated with, I think, great success and very smoothly. Um, I'll let Rick talk to the technical specifics of where we are now, but I'll just say that there's only one piece of work left to be done, and that is going to happen next week, and that is um, some overlay paving at the busway that passes behind the school, uh, just to give that paving, which is in slightly rough shape, a little bit more resilience um, in the coming few years. Um, and after that, they are all done. Um, and Tammy might have some feedback as well. We'll, we'll let Rick speak to the um, uh, technical accomplishment first. Sure. So again, what has been accomplished is that the rammed aggregate piers, stole, st ground improvements have been installed. Those are I think there are about 750 of them installed underneath the mound of dirt you see out there now. The mound of dirt uh, happily got completed ahead of schedule. That mound of dirt uh, is intended to replicate the dead weight of the new building and thus compact the ground under it before we start. Uh, the design for that uh, overburden was that it needed to re, uh, remain in place for 90 days. And with their completion mid-June, that would get us to mid-September. So uh, the successful general bidder will um, begin to, uh, will be able to move that dirt 
and start his foundation work as fast as he can manage his own uh, business without having to wait for some sort of uh, timeline for the, the dirt to be there. So that's all, that's all very happy. happy. Uh, <clears throat> just as far as early work, uh, a couple of other things that we've done, there's been discussion about uh, long lead items uh, on the electrical side, like switch gear and generators. Working with Bob Parent and uh, Simone, we have uh, gone through procurement of the generator under a uh, municipal bid list process. And we have bid as the goods and services, the electrical switch gear, those bids will be due, I think in about a week. And what that will be able to do is turn those, uh, the generator and the main switchboard into owner supplied items that will be installed by the general contractor and the electrical contractor. So we're doing everything that we can do to mitigate any uh, lead time delays on the construction process. Thank you. Um, Kathy, I just want to know, it looks like Tammy joined us. Yeah, Tammy, so you can just uh, let us make sure you can hear. You, you look yes. like you're smiling. So hi, Tammy. Well, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. She's smiling because it's I the know. end of school. We know why she's smiling. <laughs> Okay, any questions about the that construction update? Tammy, are you, things calm down there? We can't you're, hear you. You're muted, Tammy. I unmuted and it muted me back. Yeah, Gagler, Gagler Ducci was really great to work with. They were very communicative. Uh, you know, even insofar as we had this like water drainage issue, they got right back to me about what it, what was going on and why the water was taking a little bit longer to drain, um, you know, communicated well with students that were really interested in the building project. Thank you, Ksenia, for letting some of the students interview you. Thank you so much. So yeah, it's been a great experience. Once the fence was up, then I felt a lot, my relief went down significantly. So thank you. You weren't the only one, Tammy, if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> so, having a boundary between construction and children is, is always a good moment. So, okay. And any Tammy, other we're happy to continue um, education with kids or uh, this was just dirt. Dirt is fun, but we're going to have a building start to go up in the fall. So we're happy to talk to the staff and figure out uh, what would help them most. All right, Thank so the, the next item was update on final design decisions. And actually we have a, the design subcommittee is meeting today, which I'm not sure when we drafted the agenda, we realized it would be after this meeting, but Tim and Rick, do you have anything that you wanna bring up to the full committee? Um, there is one item that we'd like to bring up with the full committee, uh, just as overview, um, the changes that we're gonna be discussing with the design committee are very minor and just you know closing any, um, loose ends that we have us uh, uh, it might not even be noticeable what we're going to talk about what we just want to make sure we have anything on what we do want to talk about with the full committee is and i'm going to share my screen at 60 percent as a ve measure we eliminated uh, some fencing um, it's highlighted here to the east of the uh, basketball courts um, it, that particular item saved us about twenty thousand um, dollars. And what you can't see here is immediately to the east of the court, there's a slight slope. It it grades down about three feet over fifteen feet, so it's about twice as steep as an accessible handicap ramp. Um, and then you're into grass, which is the flood compensatory storage area. Um, we are proposing or recommending that that fence be put back with the um, numbers that we got at the 90% estimate. Uh, we don't think it's a real issue if it's there either way, but it's certainly a matter of convenience for a PE class with working on uh, these two basketball courts. Uh, basketball would roll down the hill. Kids would have to do it, I would imagine. From the point of view of 
management of classes that the defense would definitely be appreciated by the gym teachers that were there. And, uh, you know, just to be honest, you know, 40 year olds playing basketball don't want to chase the ball down the hill either. So um, we think it's definitely a functional um, improvement. There is a gravel strip at the east end of the court that um, since the court is sloped slightly towards the flood storage area, when water runs off, it could damage the end of the asphalt and um, erode the top of the hill. So that is there too. So it's it's just another means to keep um, kids and players away from that and, and, and reduce site maintenance. So we are suggesting that that be put it back in and for $20,000, uh, it's basically within the origin of merit for the cost. So that is the one thing we wanted to bring up to the full committee. Yeah, it didn't occur to us uh, that uh, this was also part of the VE when we were discussing the backstop at the last meeting and apologize for that. This, as Tim said, I think this is a uh, uh, money well spent if if you all agree. No, I, Tim had asked me earlier in the week and I thought it'd be best to bring it to the whole committee. Um, and I had asked about uh, Rupert, particularly for your staff, whether it made it harder or had no impact at all on maintenance, you know, in terms of mowing. Um, and he said, your, I think your response was no, you know, like the, the yeah, fence wouldn't interfere with um, doing it. And so I also wondered, does it help hold the gravel in place? So it may, may actually have a function that way as well. And then I see two hands are up. Uh, Bruce? Um, I assume this requires a, a motion uh, to be voted uh, by the committee. And if so, I move uh, that the uh, uh, committee authorize the architect to include this uh, additional item into the uh, bid package. Is there a second? I would second that. Uh, Jonathan, I saw your hand was up. I was going to do the same thing Bruce just did, which was to say, I'm assuming we we did need a vote on this. If you want okay. a motion, so. <laughs> so are, um, so if there are any, you know, I'm not positive we need a vote on this, but in any case, we wanted to get a sense of the committee. So is there, is there any, uh, other comments, discussions on this? I mean, this actually. When I heard about it, it made sense to me, but I thought it was better to make sure the Dougs, Tammies, um, the people who have to, Ruperts who have to work on this thought this made sense also. And Kathy, Paul is in as, atten as an attendee. I'm wondering if we should promote him in case oh, you- sure. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Never expect that. So I'm not seeing any, uh, I see Rupert's hand is up. Paul, welcome. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I think we should go for it. Okay, I'm not seeing any uh, disagreement. So um, I guess I could formally call for a vote, but we didn't, it wasn't on, it, it was other on than design things, but um, I can't remember what we did last time, Margaret, but uh, this, Paul, this is, to put a protective fence on the east side of the basketball courts to prevent, there's a grade, a three foot drop, drental, to prevent the ball from rolling away. Um, and there's a motion to authorize, it's a $20,000 put back into the design. So I'll just, I'll make sure everyone's on board by calling out names. Um, Doug. Yes. Doug. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Bruce. Yes. Amy. Yes. Deb. Yes. Paul. I'll abstain since I wasn't part of the conversation. Thank you. Rupert. Yes. Simone. Yes. Alicia. Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's unanimous with, I think, two missing. Thanks, Tim. And one abstention. And one abstentions, right. 
Okay. Um, the I, I, also, I just also want to say thank you for that attention to detail. Um, mm -hmm. You know, none of us can see a slope. <laughs> so thanks very much. So the next item on the agenda was uh, an update from the sustainability subcommittee, which met a few weeks ago. Jonathan, as the chair, do you want to give that update? I can, and I'm I'm, I'm now being trying to do this uh, from memory, and it has been a couple of weeks. Um, we uh, had a very productive meeting. Um, the design team uh, updated us on the current kind of state of uh, the energy model. Um, there have been some slight changes over the intervening period of time. I, I think it had been probably maybe three to six months actually since we had previously met. Um, but we're still on target to meet uh, both the requirements of the uh, the town's uh, zero net energy bylaw and and the requirements uh, to to uh, get the, the very nice um, rebates uh, from the various utilities. Uh, Kathy, am I missing anything big? I know we went through plug loads which is which was a, a useful exercise. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was some other large agenda item that I'm I'm blanking out on. So I think the main thing, Jonathan, is that um, we got some very good public comments that asked about some additional equipment that hadn't been counted. So yep. they re they reran it, and we're still to include them. So we're still on target. And I guess that analysis, Tim, goes into or 90% or, or whatever, but, but, you know, there's the energy modeling has been done again. And my other only other comment is they are also the modelers for Eversource. You know, so this is a-, a Thorne group. Thomas Addy. Yeah, the, the, the group, right, the, 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 the they, yeah. So Bruce, I see your hand is up too, sorry. Oh, just, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, as a member of this committee, I, I was uh, very impressed at the number of uh, of our consultant team that were present. I mean, it was astonishing. It was something like a, a dozen or more people, including the uh, kitchen design consultant, who was uh, uh, terrifically informative about um, questions related to walk-in coolers and so forth. Um, somebody else, there were so many names I couldn't remember them all, gave a, a very thorough outline of the submarine hearing and so forth. Uh, uh, it was a very comprehensive meeting. Uh, a, a, a great deal was asked of the committee and a great deal was delivered back uh, of the consultant team and a great deal was delivered back. It was it was a really solid meeting. Thank you. You know, and, and that the, to those who want to see the detail, it is posted under this subcommittee that um, the plug load and energy analysis, including the updated version of it. All right, Margaret, we're moving briskly along here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next item was response to public questions. So there were two questions that had come up at the last uh last meeting. So one of them was a question about MSBA reimbursement. And I we thought it would be a good idea just to sort of give an update on how that works. And so I'm going to make a couple of general comments about the process. But I want to say that it's Ksenia is really, uh, with Connor's uh, assistance, is really the master of this process. And um, in a nutshell, um, Ksenia and Connor prepare a monthly requisition, which is provided to Jennifer and Bob Parent at the moment. Although Jennifer, I think someone else will be coming. The, the town's in the process, has hired someone new to take Sean Mangano's former position. And so that new person will now be involved going forward. So, um, they meet monthly to look at the requisition process and it goes into the MSBA and then the turnaround from the MSBA is fairly quick. So that's kind of the big picture about the reimbursement. Ksenia, do you want to say, get dig into a little bit more detail about that? Sure, just lightly. Um, 
once the in, well, the invoice package, you see it here, right? We present it here as well. After approval here, it goes to the next uh, warrant cycle. Amherst has an amazingly timely uh, payment process really to be commended and Jennifer to be commended on keeping up with it while uh, wearing so many hats lately. Um, once paid, uh, we enter the same invoices into the MSBA's ProPay system, which is how reimbursement is requested. It is after payment. Um, and within a month to a day, very timely, uh, the MSBA does their review and audit and send a check uh, to the town with reimbursement. Um, all uh, reimbursements are subject to the caps and um, limitations, restrictions that were part of a project funding agreement. So it's not 100% of the invoice package, but everything follows the rules um, of the original agreement. Um, and we do always have opportunity to discuss or challenge or, you know, attempt to see if we can um, increase reimbursement limits. And in every case so far, we found that things are basically as previously agreed. So um, no interesting surprises, really quite boring and a pace, which is how we like it. <laughs> We don't like we don't like adventures and money. So, um, does anyone have any questions about that? Yep. Okay. So the other question that was raised was about uh, potential expansion of solar using other funding outside the project budget. And Kathy, I think you were going to speak to that one. Yeah, I will, and then Paul can give us whatever the current status is of it. Um, when the concept of adding and what was uh, discussed was adding a million dollars. <throat> Denisco said it would be better to wait, um, get the project underway, and then come back. And before the end of this year, they could contract with the same team that's putting the solar on for the school that will supply the school. They could contract for an expansion, and this would be on the north side of the parking lot. And Tim and Rick, you can correct me if I'm not getting this right. And that that that's in a second phase of the way the building project, because that second phase is also the demolition of the existing school. You know, but but at that point there will be a parking lot, and so the design for that would have to be done once the town makes a final decision on that and then add it as I think you talked about it, Tim, as a change order that we would be increasing the amount. So Paul, there's some timing on this and a final decision, but right now the design team has not spent time to design that. They just know where it will, where it will go, but we don't even have yet an estimate on how many solar panels does that buy because it's you know it's a guesstimate based on it has to be canopies and the other thing about it is it's always been discussed as being on its own what's the right word monitor um you know so it's it's not going to be feeding into the fort river school it will be feeding into the town in some way in terms of where is the offset for solar um, and I guess, Paul, it would be the way we're doing with the landfill. We designate where those credits go for town-based utility costs. So I'll let you just speak, but that's, it's sort of sitting there, not, not done in terms of design work on it. Yeah. No, I think you, you hit it on the, the nail on the head, exactly where we are on that. Um, when Bob Parent gets back, we'll be focusing more on this, um, going forward. Um, and, um, it seemed to be a logical place since we will have a newly repaved parking lot to put the additional solar panels there. And so um, they will, um, uh, with the, and it will, the way we handle the landfill now is that we, they ask us to allocate the credits to different accounts. And so the town will look at what, the, where those credits will go. You know, just the other thing for those who are following it's it's a fin financing issue, but the IRA, uh, the federal government provides a direct credit to a municipality for things like solar panels. And this will be an entirely different fiscal year, and it won't be directly associated with the other solar or or the 
systems within the school. So it will, as far as it will qualify for a 30% um, federal reimbursement on on the system, which is really good news because it's it's uh, leveraging money and and we get the solar credits toward our electrical uh, piece. So I think it's it will be a very wise investment if that's the final decision. <laughs> Deb, um, are these the ARPA funded? Um... Yes. Thank you. Yep. And that, you know, ARPA has to be, it has to be spent by 2026, mm -hmm. or, but it has to be ready to go by the end of this year. And that's all within the feasibility for this. It, um, it, it, it has to be contracted by the end of this calendar year. So I, I'm not seeing any other um, hands up on this. Um, Margaret, is I think the next is invoices. Is that invoices, correct? yep. Turning it over to Ksenia and Connor. Ksenia, you're muted, or you were muted when I saw your lips moving. I am, am I now unmuted? Now yeah. you're unmuted. And you can see my screen? Yep. Yeah. All good things. All right. So Ms. Hopefully is becoming familiar. A road ahead paved remains a substantial portion of the project. The green piece of a bar is what's been paid so far, and that's $6.2 million. The black sliver uh, is a more substantial sliver this month than any month previous, and that's the current invoice package. It is the largest one we've paid so far. It is a million and a half. One point uh, one million five hundred thirteen five seventy three to be specific. The yellow bit is what's currently under contract but has not been invoiced yet, and that at the moment is the retainage money that we are holding on Gagliarducci, the early site package contractor, who has been is with this invoice package going to be paid for most of their work except the busway that hasn't been overlaid yet. Um, but when we pay, we hold back 5% on all construction work. And you'll see more of this as we go on into the general contractor's work to incentivize contractors to come back and clean up and fix any punch list issues at the end of a job. Gaglia Ducci really doesn't have any, but that value is in here. In the yellow is also the balance of answer advisories, OPM services through the end of construction, and the NISCO designs um, services through the end of construction. Um, in terms of where this, how this looks on the cash flow, um, where the yellow bar is, that's where we are with this invoice package and time. Um, you could see the green actual bar um, is this month's package and it is bigger than any of the previous green bars that we've processed. Um, but, and, and it's now starting to look like, you know, really something um, on the scale of the construction that's coming ahead, but still relatively low, right? Building the building is most of the cost of building the building. Um, here's the cover sheet for the invoice package. Um, all the invoices presented have been reviewed, uh, negotiated, revised as necessary, and finalized and recommended for payment by us um, to Amherst. Um, there is there are one, two, three, four, five, six invoices. Uh, one from Answer Advisory, us, OPM, uh, which advances um, our payments by 3% um, and brings us to 27% complete. So you could see that the bulk of our contract is up ahead in construction oversight. For Denisco, uh, the design, um, they're, they're advanced by 2%, bringing them to 65% complete. Um, on the contract value, but something like 95% complete on the actual design effort. Uh, what remains of their contract does include construction oversight. Um, Gaglier Ducci, this is the big piece, the early site package. This is their fourth requisition um, or invoice. It's um, a million 
one million two hundred fifty seven thousand five fifteen. Um, it is a full fifty three percent of their contract. I have to say that they were flying toward the in the last month month and a half of their work. Um, they've completed their work about a month ahead of schedule. Um, and now everything has a little more time to sit and compress as it needs to. So this payment will bring them up to 92% complete, well, 92% paid, um, uh, and leaves behind another 200,000, which is the retainage that I talked about, plus the little bit of work for a final survey and uh, pavement overlay at the busway. Um, Allied Testing uh, is a third party testing and inspection agency. Uh, they've been out there quite actively um, measuring the compaction on each layer of dirt as it goes down. Um, and our answer advisory's clerk of a work, Slee Figgins, has been out there being very judicious in how often we use them, uh, making sure if it can be only half a day instead of a day, that that's what gets done. So the spending is still very low for having accomplished everything that needs to be accomplished. So they're only at 2%. Um, I will, any questions before I move on from this and the next part will be me doing my usual scroll for every page, unless somebody would like to stop me from doing that. Hearing no questions, I will go ahead. The answer advisory invoice includes um, the construction oversight, the last round of estimating, um, and the last round of sustainability net zero peer review by architect Shelley, as well as the re-advertising newspaper fee for the second round of elevator um, file sub bid um, attempt to pre-qualify them, they never respond. They didn't respond this time. Um, so that is no longer a file submit package. Scrolling, scrolling, please stop me if you want to spend more time. Uh, this is the uh, estimating invoice. It's part of answers. And the one of the first of the two architect invoices with a log of what they did and when. Um, architects, well, Jacob, subconsultant, the second architect invoice. This is the elevator uh, re advertisement. And that brings us to Denisco. So this is the 165. 750 invoice that brings the construction documents to 93% done. Uh, this is the NISCO's invoice for $3,300 for Thornton Tomasetti's plug load calculations that uh, informed the last sustainability um, subcommittee meeting. And this is the big a little blurry, so I'll zoom in. The big Gagliardici invoice uh, for a million two. This is their schedule of value. So as they get paid, the pay, the contract is broken down and what have they accomplished and what percent completed is. You will see this as a standard format. Um, their lien waiver, and this is the allied invoice for testing two of them, and that is it. Any questions? I, I move that we approve the invoices as presented. I second. That's Rupert. Thanks. I will go around the screen. Uh, Doug? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Deb? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Simone? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Um, I have, a, I, I don't have a question on the invoices, but is there, having the Gagliujuchi task, the pre uh, completed 
do, is is it likely that they are, will they also potentially be a subcontractor under some of the additional work or is the kind of work they do? So I'm just asking, you know, since we've had a good experience, I don't know exactly what else they do and what the pieces are of the subcontracts. The intent well, to bid. Yeah, they they will be, they will bid to the GCs um, and I would expect them to do very well in that process because they're familiar with the site. Rick, did you want to add something I mean, to I, that? I, I know that they intend to, to bid to at least a couple of the GCs that have uh, been pre-qualified. So we have we have four qualified GCs, you might remember. So um, we will certainly, I you know, they're not a filed subbidder, so we won't see them sort of as a separate standalone, but they'll come with the general contracting team doing the site work. Okay, then the other question I have, Paul, it's more in your and Jennifer in the finance department. Um, when will the town need to go out for the larger, uh, one of the larger bonds, bond authorizations for for the school in terms of uh, the debt exclusion, when, when people might start seeing this? Piece. I know what Sean had originally told us, but I'm just curious on, uh, is that 2025? Um, so, so we have done a small borrowing for this coming fiscal year, um, and there will be another one next year, and then I think the following year or the year after, and that will complete everything. So we're going out in pieces. Is the, is the the way we're going out? Yes. Thank you. That that answered my question. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, I don't see any, and I. If there aren't any, we have one person in the public list. Um, so I'll, if it's okay with everyone, I'll open it for public comments. Okay. Hi, thanks, Tony Cunningham. Um, thank you for responding on the solar contracting. So I really appreciate the follow-up um, to answer those questions. And I think it was a great idea to add that fencing back at the basketball court. It made a lot, a lot of sense. Um, and then Kathy had you know, the same thought that I had about the money. So what I was going to ask is, ask, out of what account uh, does the town pay the invoices and receive the reimbursements from the MSBA? So I saw that the amount was 7.7 .7 million. So I had the same question as Kathy about, have we already gone out to borrow? And if you, you could consider adding that as an update, a financial update during the meetings, that would be really helpful just to see how much has the town paid, how much has the town received, Where's the money coming from? What was the interest rate and, and so on? Thank you so much. Hey, that um, that is our public has spoken, <laughs> the one person. Um so I I I want to just uh make a sort of closing comment before we adjourn. And then the the group that is the subcommittee for design, we can start early. I think that's a separate Zoom, so we have to log out. But I really appreciate the thoroughness um, of what we're hearing and the reporting back. And Ksenia, I loved it that you did interviews with the students. Um, you know, and I- I loved I, it too. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just a big ad. And so there may be a way, I'm thinking of the broader public where we're not doing regular public forums on this. There may be a way of capturing some of this in a Gazette piece or something going forward. You know, with the, um, I saw the, accessible playground in Northampton was just covered in Gazette and our accessible play playground has not been featured yet. So just trying to think of the larger public realizing how exciting this project is and that it's moving forward. So I'm just thinking through ways we might do that. And the idea that you're doing interviews with kids is fabulous. Um, so Paul, I see your hand is up. Yeah, so two things. One is we do have our new communications manager who started on Monday, so she can help with some of that sort of promotion and getting the word out. I think it's a good idea. Um, second, 
uh, just note that you can't start your design committee meeting until it's po until the posted time. Yeah, just thank you. okay, to, thank which is ten thirty, I think. Okay, so so everyone gets the gift of an hour or an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> so see you back. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, and I you're was, right. I, there wouldn't be any way for me to start it anyway, Tammy. I was just gonna say, I the um the video is on YouTube unlisted, so I'm happy to share that with you, Kathy, and then you can review it and see if there's anything of use. Okay, that'd be great. I just think it's really exciting. I mean, we we always talked of it as the fences went up and building starts that the kids are going to get more yeah. and more intrigued by all of this. Um, yeah. Well, and kids' questions never match what we think they're going to ask, so it always goes in another direction. So I'm <laughs> it. So it's really fascinating to hear sort of what they're thinking and how they're thinking about it. So it's you know it's a great interview, and Ksenia <laughs> really sort of followed their lead. So thank you again, Ksenia. <laughs> They were fifth graders. I have a, one of those at home, uh, but I would love to maybe pregame it um, and understand like what pieces of information would be more useful to spark their interest and to integrate the design team into it as well. You know, if if, if they're willing. You know, we I think I told the larger group this, but we because of um, logistical issues, we held one of our design subcommittee meetings in the library at. Fort River, which meant that there were other things going on in the library and the kids all uh, came over and wanted to touch the, the bricks and they wanted to, to, to see the pictures. And it was like, oh, cool. I really like that. But it, it's just, it's just, it's terrific. So thank you very much to everyone. And so I think uh, we need a motion to adjourn and I think we'll be able to adjourn early. Um, unless some other comments. So moved. Second. All right, going quickly around the room, Kathy C. S. Doug. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Bruce. Yep. Sammy. Yes. Paul. Yes. Deb. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Simone. Yes. And Alicia. Yes. We are adjourned at 919. Thank you and enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thank bye you. Bye, everybody. Bye.